Velocity Map Imaging Spectrometer is a device used to image velocities of charged particles. In many experiments we use ionization to investigate the structure and dynamics of atoms, molecules or clusters. In this experiment we use strong laser fields, XUV radiation which can be generated either in synchrotrons or using the XUV lasers, or even energetic collisions to create ions. When ions are created, electrons and ions or ionic fragments are flying from the point of interaction and can be controlled by electrostatic fields. The idea of the velocity map imaging spectrometer was first suggested by David Chandler and then further developed by Epping and Parker. The spectrometer consists of an electrostatic lens which focuses charged particles on the detector. The lens is composed of three electrodes, the repeller, the extractor and the grounded ring. Here you can see these electrodes. This is the repeller, this is the extractor. The ionization takes place exactly between them. They are under high voltages, positive to detect ions and negative to detect the electrons. Then follows the grounded ring the fly tube over which the particle fly towards the detector and the detector itself. In this case, this is the microchannel plate with the phosphor screen. Here you can see a sketch demonstrating the principle of the velocity map imaging spectrometer. This is the repeller, extractor and ground state electrodes as well as the detector sketched here. Repeller, extractor, Round detector. The particles are created between the repeller and the extractor and fly towards the detector, pushed by the electrostatic fields, which are applied to them. If the particles have a drift velocity in a direction perpendicular to the axis of the spectrometer, they hit the detector at a spot away from the center. Here, two orange trajectories demonstrate the particles which have the same drift velocity perpendicular to the axis. They both hit the detector offset from the center. The particles which have zero velocity, represented here by the new trajectory, hit the detector exactly in the middle. The same process happens in the plane perpendicular to the plane of the sketch. This way, the three-dimensional distribution of velocities created at the moment of ionization is transformed to a two-dimensional distribution detected at the detector. Transformation from the three-dimensional to the two-dimensional distribution is called Abel transform, named after the mathematician Nils Hendrik Abel. Here on the screen you could see the expression. It represents the integration along straight lines cutting through the three-dimensional distribution. The Abel transform can be visualized in a very simple experiment. The three-dimensional distribution will be represented by the spinning ring. Here I spin the ring and it forms a three-dimensional distribution which is then imaged by the light on the screen. The shadow on the screen is the Abel transform of our distribution. Here on the screen you could see the actual experimental measurement. On the left, you could see the image recorded in ionization of argon atoms by XUV photons. This image can be transformed into a slice through a three-dimensional distribution owing to the cylindrical symmetry of the ionization. On the right-hand side, you see the reconstructed image. Several methods exist to reconstruct the original three-dimensional distribution from the measured two-dimensional distribution. One of them, Fourier-Henkel method, consists of sequential application of Fourier and Henkel transforms. This is a very fast method, but produces a relatively noisy result. Much better results can be achieved with an iterative inversion, where the reconstructed image iteratively approaching the measured experimental distribution. Two other methods are called basics and p-basics. They are based on the basis set expansion of the experimentally measured image and reconstruction of the three-dimensional distribution from the reconstructions of individual members of the basis set expansion. 
basics is working in Descartes coordinates, while P basics is working in polar coordinates.